so you got yourself the ASI Air Plus. Then this video might be of some help to you. I will cover the basic setup of connecting and the general overall usage of this brilliant little device. It's Gerald from Optic Central. Let's get started with the ASI Air Plus. So first things first, we need to connect power to the ASI Air Plus. So you will need a 12 volt adapter around 5 amps. And if you're out on the field with no mains power, you may want to get one of these lithium batteries. Let's have a look at the contents within the box. As you see, it's nicely packaged. And the first thing you will notice is the aerial that is attached. This is a vastly improved design that they've incorporated to give you a much stronger, a much further Wi-Fi signal. In the box that comes with all the power cables you will need to power all the devices to the ASI Air Plus, as well as your USB cable as well. So let's get started with the ASI Air Plus. In this case, to the dovetail adapter on the telescope and connect all the power cables to the other devices that require power, such as the cool cameras, the dew heater controller, and maybe the mount itself. You know, I prefer running to the power to the mount separately, as you may find the power needed to slew the telescope overrides the capacity of the power adapter. So I choose two separate adapters, one for the mount and one for the ASI Air Plus. So connect the USB cables to the ASI Air Plus. You will notice two USB 3 and two USB 2 ports. So use the USB 3 ports for devices that require fast data transfer, like your camera and the auto guider camera. The filter wheel and the focuser only needs to be connected to the USB 2 ports, as these devices don't require transmit data. So there's a, um, a USB-C port if you want to transfer data stored on the ASI Air Plus internal storage to your computer. And an SD card slot if you want to use that as well. So before we get started, we need to download the AS Air app. If you use an iPhone, download the app from the iPhone App Store. Or if you're an Android user, download the same app for the Google Play Store. So you'll need to register the ASI Air Plus. This procedure is self-explanatory and you simply follow the prompts and you'll be connected. So before we open the app, we need to connect to the hotspot that the ASI Air Plus creates. When you connect to the ASI Air Plus, you'll require a password. So the default password is 12345678. Quite a simple password. Once you've connected that password, you're now connected. So we have a few menu options to go through. On the top, we have a Wi-Fi power connection. You'll notice the main camera, the guide scope, the telescope mount, the filter wheel, the electric focuser, and the storage, and, and the information icon. And on the left, we have the histogram, the focuser, the guide graph, the plate solve, and tool buttons on the left. And on the right, we have the focus, the polar alignment, the preview, the auto run, the plan, the live stacking, and the video preview. Let's get into these buttons in more detail. So with the overall ASI Air Plus settings, here we can turn on the power to the various devices and look at things such as voltage, temperature, Wi-Fi connection, and the CPU temperature, input voltage, current, and total power. We can also control the power outputs as well. The main camera settings. 
you will need to locate the camera you will be imaging from and slide the button to the right to enable it. You will need to enter the details of the focal length of your telescope. If you're using a focal reducer, you will have to factor that in too. For example, I have a 950mm telescope and I use a 0.8 focal reducer. So now my telescope is 950 times 0.8, which is 760 millimeters. Hey, if you're not sure, you can enter zero. And during the initial plate solve, the ASI Air Plus will populate the correct focal length of your telescope, together with any extras you may have in your optic train. Set the gain according to what ZWO recommend for your camera. Take a moment to do some research on this. Usually you will find a gain of 100 or above is recommended. Make sure the cooling is turned on. The latest upgrade turns this on automatically for you. But just make sure the slide button is turned to the right and slide the temperature down enough for the sensor to be cold enough for your images to be virtually free of noise. You also get the chance to customize the file naming structure. I usually leave this as is. The guide camera settings is the next tab you want to look at. Again, select your camera in this case. I have an ASI 120mm Mini. I select that, slide the button to the right and enable it. Select the focal length of your guide camera. It's my guide camera is the 30F4 and that has a focal length of 120mm. I will set my gain to around 50 so I get enough definition in the stars. Leave the rest of the settings as is. Except for when you come to dithering, you may want to open that and change a few things here. So dithering will allow the mount to move at designated pixel movements at random. And by doing this, any existing noise will be cancelled out during the post processing. I would recommend that you set your dithering to two to three pixels and choose dithering after every single shot. So that in case I would enter one in the field. Don't enable just the RA button if you use an equatorial mount. There are many ways to connect to your telescope. I guess it depends on the make and model you have chosen. I have the AZ EQ6 mount by Skywatcher, which is a very popular mount. And my connection is using an EQ mod cable, one of these. And rather than connecting via the handset, which is one of these, I've tried this method many times before, but I have issues with the connection. But when you use a phone or tablet that is connected to the internet, you'll find that the mount info is already configured for you. If not, then type in these details manually. Hey, if you're not sure what these coordinates are, Google search in your location and enter in these details. So with the Meridian Flip details, they can be configured here, as well as tracking, and return to home button as well. It's good practice to return to home after every image sequence. The filter wheel settings. Turn the filter wheel button to the right and enable it. The ASI Air Plus will control your filters and change them accordingly to the filters you want to use. Each filter is of different thickness and values and will need to be refocused every time the filter is changed. The ASI Air Plus, provided you have an electric autofocuser, will run through a calibration procedure to get the perfect focus for your filter. Don't worry about the rotation and one-way feature. If you find that the filters are not aligned in your image properly, then try recalibrating the electric filter wheel by selecting the start button. The focus settings, once again, you will need to enable it by sliding the green bar to the right. Leave a lot of these settings to default. The autofocuser will run through a routine of doing a focus on the star. The autofocuser will calibrate back and forth producing a bell-like curve. Once the optimum focus is achieved, you'll notice a red dot is plotted. The results are astonishing. The focus you will achieve this way is the best focus you can get anywhere. When we come to the storage settings, you have eight gigabytes of onboard storage on the ASIA Plus. I think it might be more than that. 
and the provision to use a USB 3 thumb drive to store your images on that. This method is the easiest way to transfer data from the ASI Air Plus to your computer. So now let's look at the menu down on the left hand side in more detail. And here you have the histogram button that allows you to adjust the graph so you can see fine details in your dark, mid-range and light areas. You will find the histogram sits at the bottom of your screen, away from the main image, and you are able to magnify it to get finer details with your adjustments. The auto guiding graph is here, and this will show you how the auto guide is performing. As long as your polar alignment is good, the better your graph is going to be. This is something that I'll cover a little bit later. You'll notice the plate solving option is something that the ASI Plus does automatically and this too is something that I will cover in more detail later. This feature alone is the reason why I love the ASI Air Plus. It makes finding the object and framing so much easier than anything else. The tools icon is something I don't really use, but it's a good way to reinforce your targets and the star size by annotating them for you. So on the right hand side, you have the focus pane. Choose a star, Preferably something that's not too big or too bright. Yet you, you want to choose a smaller star. This will give you the best focus. So as you adjust the focus on the telescope, take note of the number you're aiming for. You're aiming for the lowest number for focus. If you own an auto focuser, you really don't need to worry about this procedure. Polar alignment is something that the ASIO Plus does remarkably well. Initially, try to get as close as possible to the South Celestial Pole and with its plate solving algorithm, the ASI Air Plus will analyze the sky in the south and give you clear directions on which way to adjust to achieve the best alignment. If you're accurate enough, that little face you see will smile at you and you'll be rewarded with fireworks. The preview pane will allow you to choose the object you want to view and you will find an extensive list of objects to choose from. This list will show you when the best time to view the object and its location in the sky. It's an easy way to pick your target or targets for the night in one easy glance. And when you're in the preview mode, it will also allow you to frame up your target and give you one last chance to see how focused your stars are. With the auto run feature, I won't go into too much detail with this. There are many resources that go into this in great detail. But what I will say, this is where you can plan your photographic session. It allows you to choose exposure time, how many photos you want to take, what binning you want to use, etc, etc. It allows you to take your dark, bias and flat calibration frames. Live stacking is very much like the auto run feature. It allows you to instantly see the object you want to photograph and you will see it take form in front of your eyes. As more data is acquired, you'll see a lot of that detail come through. For instance, I find that after two hours of data acquisition, I'm getting brilliant results. The calibration frames are usually taken beforehand and placed in a library and that resource is applied to when the live stacking begins. So the plan mode uses the auto run feature in much more detail. And with this, it allows you to plan your targets you want to photograph for the night. It allows you to plan multiple targets in one session. You may want to create a mosaic of an object that will be too big to fit in your equipment parameters. And the video preview allows you to capture the video. This is something to use when you want to capture planets. The ASI Air Plus, as you can see, offers a vast amount of features from controlling your telescope, taking photos, auto guiding, plate solving, plus a multitude of other features. So now I'm going to go live with the ASI Air Plus and show you how this whole thing comes together. Tonight we're going to go with the Tarantula Nebula NGC 2070. This beautiful nebula resides in a small Magellanic cloud. I'll go through the focusing routine to make sure my stars are nice and sharp. You will notice a red dot appears when the focus is at its optimum. I will then select the Tarantula Nebula in numerical order. In this case, I'm going down to 2070. I will select Go To, and my telescope will slew to this location. 
and do a round of plate solving to find the exact location within my frame. The preview of the tarantula will now appear. I will run the auto guider at this stage. Once the auto guiding graph begins, I can begin my imaging run. I will begin the imaging sequence of 180 seconds in this case. And after 180 seconds is up, my images will start to appear. My imaging run for tonight is to take two hours worth of data. As each frame is stacked, I will adjust the histogram below to bring out the features of the tarantula nebula. I will keep going with this until I have enough data to process much further in post-processing. Post-processing takes some time to do, but done properly and with the right amount of practice, you will be rewarded with a wonderful result. The ASI Plus will bring you a powerful and easy to use solution to your astrophotography. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming videos and we hope to see you next time. Please guys from Optic Central.